it's Thursday and we are in the car on the way to one of our favorite places to slow down. But before we do that, I thought I would talk to you about our cultural addiction to speed and how everything in our culture is just so sped up. And you know, one of the areas that I'm addicted to speed right now is a new addiction on YouTube, a new corner of YouTube that I found that I've been totally loving called BookTube. I don't know if you have found BookTubers yet, but they talk fast and they are totally pull you in to a love of inanimate objects so you can consume more and buy more and read more and get excited about more books and oh my gosh, it's so exciting and it's so fast. What up reader fam? Today I'm going to be doing a video that is inspired by a book and that is actually the book explosion book of the month and this month we are working with Penguin Random House. And I want to read more and buy more books and uh, the booktube is like the most exciting thing right now for me. But the problem is and I think a lot of us can relate to this is that the symptoms of living these sped up lives is that we're constantly exhausted and tired because we're rushing through our to-do list. Not only are we rushing through our to-do list, we're completely rushing through our bucket list as well. We're not even enjoying the things that we enjoy doing. You know, there's even speed yoga, that's yoga videos that are sped up, and I will be the first to admit that I almost watch every single speed yoga that comes up on my Instagram feed from start to finish. I swear to God, there is something in my brain that gets released whenever I see those videos. It's almost like I've done the complete yoga session myself. Something in my brain gets released and it feels like I've been through that whole yoga session myself. There's a trick of the brain. It's really seductive. Tim seriously just found this on the side of the road, on the road when we stopped at a stoplight. And isn't this just exactly how we feel about technology sometimes, like so frustrated by the constant demands and the beeping and the notifications and the information overload that we just want to throw our iPhone, whatever this is, out the window and let go of it all. And you know, there's actually a slow web movement that is about helping us take back control of technology so you don't have to throw your iPhone out the window. And you know, one of the things we do when you come into our membership community is give you some really concrete tools so that you can engage with online media, your devices in a really grounded uh, way. This is just like too much, too much. One of our absolute favorite places to come to slow down is Tea Farm and I am so excited to be here today. So I'm here with Victor, the co-creator of West Home Tea Farm and I'm really excited to be able to talk to you about your commitment to mm -hmm. going slow with this because I don't know too many people who would have been able to commit to taking seven years to grow mm. tea plants. So tell me how you managed to have that vision of taking so long, like a tea plant takes five years to mature. Yeah, and waiting a little extra time. So the, the whole concept, um, creating it, wanting to make things happen, rushing things was a real learning. So we made quite a few mistakes in the beginning. That was a very practical way of slowing things down, allowing to be, allowing the sun, allowing the different seasons, allowing the shading, really from a growing perspective to see what was actually happening. That was a hard thing to do because mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's like we must create, we must produce. So that was a real learning, slowing down, not making the mistakes and then really immersing into what we wanted to create and accomplish. So the practicality of tea growing in regular conditions, three to four years, knowing that we didn't have perfect conditions would be a little bit longer. On our fifth year, still tasting the tea, all the time, 
Margaret didn't think it was good enough. Mm -hmm. So that was allowing the soil, the terroir to develop the tea and very hard again from a business perspective to yeah. not share uh, the what everyone really wanted. Uh, however, being true to it, being true to the thousands of years of tea culture and tea history, we waited another year and we were glad that we did because then the true flavors, the true terroir, the true Canadian tea came forward. And yes, it was really hard. Seven years now in the making and um, lots of lessons and learning, but yeah, the stopping, the being, and then just letting it happen uh, has, been, has been the journey. So what advice would you have to people in a culture that wants us to rush, speed up, have results, you know? What can we take from you? What can we learn from you? Because, you know, I think it's so counterintuitive. Mm, it is. We want we want immediate. We want satiation. Yeah. We want that. And, and, and that structure and technology is, is built around that. It is it is asking a lot to just stop, to to not separate from it, but really be in it. You know, we, as we uh, just gave a little tour, to actually people connected to the, to the earth. My personal philosophy, why this was all started, why this continues, is that the connection to nature for me personally is 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 the, the healing of, of the you know the ills that are in the world if more people were connected to nature to the place that, that provides everything earth air water fire you have those components in a cup so in a very practical way you've got all those elements to give you nature that connection to nature wherever you are whether you're in an apartment in new york uh, city or you're fortunate enough to be here immersed and steeped in nature you have that immediate connection that's accessible to you and that's been our sort of underlying theme slow down connect to what's really important that can also be yourself through the process and and that's really kind of our underlying theme for us tea is more than a product it's, a, it's an experience and a, and a philosophy of be be in the moment enjoy taste and 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 share yeah you know one thing i hadn't really thought of before uh today and you i think you kind of pointed out it out to me is how actually arriving here and how the way mm. we arrive here actually asks us to slow down so do, do you want to maybe explain that a little bit yeah i mean we're we're only you know four minutes off the trans canada highway but once you come <clears throat> around the corner very older uh, farming community the the lay of the property itself the the driveway coming down through the tea garden there's a commitment to adventure there's a commitment to i'm not sure what's ahead of me but there's there's a sense of like something special is about to happen and it almost forces you to just kind of really be present you know whether it's a whether it's an instinctual i'm not sure what's about to happen <clears throat> Or just the the sheer beauty of of the mountains and the the west coast feel. So we're very fortunate. The the, the place itself immerses you and then challenges you and and, and invites you to explore. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I most enjoy about coming here and that really enhances the experience is Margaret's hand made clay cups and teapots. So tell us about how that combines the experience with the tea. Mm. Well. Uh, hand hand making of the tea here at Canadian Tea. Margaret uh, hand builds each piece unique. There's a slower process. She technically doesn't use the wheel, so she's not a potter. Each piece is, has its own organic shape. The length of making a teapot is two to three months in the making. People don't realize mm -hmm. each one, the time it takes Margaret to make one cup, a potter can make 10 or 15. So there's mm -hmm. that element infused in the clay that you experience and how that vessel holds our tea or and even our imported teas and our herbal infusions, that that sort of holding as I was talking about um, something that's that's made for you right here on the other side of the barn uh, really invites that meditation that sense of connection tactile so all the senses mm -hmm. are very alive mm -hmm. and 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 yeah if you want to slow down this it's it's right here for you okay. thank you so much so yeah. I'm gonna put the links in the show notes and if you are ever on Vancouver Island you have to definitely come to tea farm it's like when we first moved here it was the experience that blew our mind the uh, most yeah so okay thanks for taking the time thanks. to talk Real to pleasure. us today victor Real pleasure. So there's actually a slow tea movement and it's a really big movement and it has to do with proper farming practices and lots of things but it also has to do with stopping and enjoying the tea and there's a lot of nostalgia. For me, I remember when I was a kid, there was afternoon tea and my mom would actually sit down with her friends across the table and they would sit and they would have a cup of tea. And I'm not talking about how we do it today where we line up in a Starbucks or a conglomerate store and grab a paper cup of tea with a plastic lid and keep going. They would actually sit 
down across from each other at a table with a pot of tea and have several cups and talk about the day and really enjoy each other's company. And that's, I think, what the slow movement is all about. And so I just love coming here and going back to that, slowing down and enjoying a cup of tea.